Welcome to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. We interview great guests who inspire you to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Be sure you visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, just relax as you listen. You can do something else, but be ready to make an important note. And let's get started. The title of this interview is How to Protect Your Coaching Business. We'll be talking about the importance of coaches protecting themselves legally with good contracts. My guest is Jessica Weisenbluth. Jessica is a practicing healthcare and wellness lawyer and a graduate of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, IIN. After seeing the contract templates given to students from IIN and from companies like LegalZoom, she realized health coaches and coaches in general needed access to better contracts that one, were specialized, two, provided all the right protections and boundaries, and three, were affordable. She decided to create the integrative lawyer to fill this need so coaches can focus on healing the world instead of legal headaches. I like that very <laughs> much. Welcome, Lee. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. This is very valuable information. I used to be a life coach, a personal development coach. Now, I, I haven't worked with anyone one-on-one -on -one for a while. I'm the head of this technological coaching company but this is a very important matter when you deal with clients one-on-one -on -one or in clients in general and the you know people often confuse therapists and coaches but they're whatever differences they are they have a lot of similarity and you take mm -hmm. a lot of responsibility with people's well-being and 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 their and their private thoughts and intimacy so this is and i thought that yeah I, I never had any legal trouble but um, I've had contracts and I, and I was hazy about them. Mm. So this is very good. I, I, ba I basically copied stuff, you know, and I'm, you know, from other templates and I wasn't like, no, oh, this is yeah. exactly right. It sounds like there's a- yeah, That's the classic, copy and paste it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and by the way, if you have a, a freeze, don't worry about it. The vast majority of my audience, well over 95% are going to be listening. Though if you, if you care to see how Jessica looks and I recommend that she's, very pleasant on the eyes. Go over to YouTube <laughs> and check her out on this on this interview. Very good. So uh, let's get right into it. How do contracts protect your boundaries? Yeah. So, you know, I think it's interesting because health coaches are often teaching and coaches in general are often teaching their clients how to protect their boundaries, right? Whether it's boundaries with food, boundaries with family, boundaries in the workplace, right? We all, and, and it's a difficult thing, but, and so they're so, you know, these coaches are really good at doing their jobs in that way. But when it comes to protecting their own boundaries with their clients, sometimes they drop the ball because they're really not sure. Maybe they don't want to spend money and, you know, it can expose them to a lot of liability. So I like to think that contracts and wellness really go hand in hand because that's what a contract does. It's protecting your boundaries. So having things like explaining what your refund policy is, having things like explaining what your termination policy is, giving you an out if let's say you have a very difficult client, right? Um, and that's something I've sometimes seen you know, template agreements that are offered for free online, drop the ball on, or dropping the ball on protecting your intellectual property, or, uh, you know, limiting your liability, all of those things, which I know if you're a coach, maybe you're like, what is all of that? I don't know what that is. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> you don't have to. And, and, you know, you mentioned the copy and pasting. I think um, what that is something that often happens is that coaches are copying and pasting, and they're taking something from one agreement, putting into another, and they don't even realize that that provision they took doesn't really even make sense in the rest of the agreement they're copying and pasting it in. So, uh, you know, it's really important to have somebody who knows what they're doing so that they can protect your boundaries. And once your boundaries are protected, you can feel that much better helping your clients with whatever yeah, it is. You're and I imagine with. if if a client or an ex client wants, really wants to be litigious, they can take all these technical things and really hold hold that against you. 
if it's not, you know, in clear, you know, if, if, legally, if, it's, if, there, if there's contradictions that could really go against you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think specifically for health coaches, they have to be so careful. And I would say also life coaches, because as you mentioned, there's so many similarities between therapy that if you don't have something really clearly in your contract that's outlining, like, I am not a therapist, I'm not a doctor, like, don't stop taking your medications, always speak to a doctor before you do anything, you know, and then all of like, you know, having important um, release language in there, then yeah, if your client, let's say, changes their diet or starts exercising because you recommended it, and now they're like vomiting because it's so foreign to them and they're feeling sick or they have an allergic reaction to this food or whatever, and you don't have something covering that in the agreement, you know, what happens if they come after you and say, hey, you told me to do this and now look at me, you know? You know, I had a very high success rate. I don't say that to toot my own horn, just coaches should have a high, very high success rate. But the few that, I, that you know, did not have good outcomes, I just hope that it would just go away and that they wouldn't ask for a refund, you know, because I do a lot, you know, I, I think any good coach, there's a lot of prep work mm -hmm. and then you have the actual time with the client. And, but it was just a hope, uh, you know, I mean, I had policies, but, you know, I, I knew that, you know, the, the legal, if a person really wants something and they get a good lawyer, they can, they, they can make a, a lot of noise, uh, you know, depending on how much effort, time and energy, but some people are litigious, and what do you do if, if you're not, if things, if you haven't dotted your I's and crossed your T's correctly, you could be in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a very important thing to do. I, I mean, hope worked out for me, but you know, a lot of times it doesn't work out for people. You know, that's not a good strategy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually just had a coach reach out to me with that, you know, she had a very difficult client and of course uh, the client wasn't listening to anything she was telling her to do and didn't get the results she wanted because she wasn't listening, but then right. she was upset and she's like, well, I haven't, you know, lost any weight. And you told me that I'm going to lose weight. And, you know, she wanted to have a phone call to talk about it. And this coach was freaking out because she was like, I just, as you said, a lot of the cost of a program is really all the preparation that goes into it, even before you start seeing a client Absolutely. so you really want to make sure that you don't have to give a refund you know <laughs> you get to keep your money uh and so that's important. the coaching industry while it's always been growing uh is is really oversaturated uh by coaches you know, it's it's a very tough market it grows all the time but it's extremely competitive so uh you know if mm -hmm. you don't if you don't deliver the goods uh, i mean you you want to put you want to have every you want to have all your ducks in a row because uh, it's 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 a rough business. At least to you know, the vast majority of coaches make a, a pittance. They don't make you know. I, there's only I think last time I looked, like perhaps less than five percent of coaches made over a hundred k, and mm. the vast majority you know making less than twenty k or whatever mm -hmm. a small amount because it's so competitive, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And and so and there's all different ways to deal with that. But if you've got to be given refunds, so you got to spend money in litigation, boy, you're really bringing that profit margin really down. So this is a very yeah. prudent thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, sometimes coaches feel hesitant to spend the money to, to buy something like this, but that's why right. I try to make my contracts really affordable. And I always remind them exactly what you just said. Like, it's worth basically the cost of my contracts is one client. Probably you'll make even more from one client. And that is worth it compared to the thousands and thousands of dollars you might have to pay if you are involved in a litigation. So do you, do you I mean, do you, you, do you deal with a client individually? I mean, certainly you do, but do you, or do you say, okay, this is for health coaches. This is for life coaches. This is for any, you know, there's, there's a hundred different kinds of coaches. Right. How, how do you go about it? Yeah. So my business, the integrative lawyer is not a law firm. It's just, uh, offering contract templates. And the reason why I did that was because like my hourly rate is pretty high. I've been practicing for eight years. So, and what I found just in speaking to coaches is that they were just not able financially, or they didn't want to financially pay that amount for me to individually create a contract for them, because that would honestly cost like thousands of dollars. Right. right? So uh, the integrative lawyer is like an educational company and I provide contract templates. They're super easy to fill in. And yeah. right now they are directed mostly to health coaches, but they're so easy to fill in that other coaches could easily just like modify it to fit whatever their program is. Uh, and the important thing is that all of those protections like intellectual property or dispute resolution, termination, all of that stuff that applies across the board to, to any kind of coach.
Great. What is the difference between getting an online free template and your contracts? Yeah. So similar to what I mentioned before, you know, when I saw, so the Institute for Integrative Nutrition is one of the most popular health coaching schools. It's a, and it's a great school for health coaching. Don't get me wrong, but you know, they're obviously not a law school. They're not lawyers. Uh, and when I saw the template agreement that they were offering students, including myself, because I was a part of the program, um, it was, you know, it just wasn't good. It was maybe like three pages and it was really missing a lot of important terms. The refund policy said that you would still give back money if you know the client wanted to leave which or if you wanted the client to leave which could be problematic because you know if you have a difficult client and you tell them i don't think this is working out anymore the last thing you want is to also have to give them their money back you know like if they're harassing you or being terrible then you want to say goodbye and be able to keep your money right. so and then you know i saw um templates on on legal zoom and um there's another website called honey honey books and I looked at that because some coaches were telling me they were looking at that. And each time there was, there were things missing, important things. Uh, and, and it, it makes sense because, you know, it's just a very generalized website. Is it better than nothing? Yes, probably, you know, mm-hmm. but there are still things in there that are, that are missing that could get you into trouble or things in there that are in there that could get you into trouble. And so, you know, I'm a healthcare lawyer. I have over eight years of experience and I've used that experience to really create very detailed you know, pointed contracts that are specific to coaches. Great stuff. Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll be right back with Jessica Weisenblum. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. People start something, then something comes up or they need a break or even a vacation and they often never get back on track. Perficio is designed to allow all of this. Visit www.perficio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O, where you can live your life as you learn and make progress toward your life-changing goals. Well, listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. We're having a discussion with Jessica Weisenbluth. We're talking about the legal side of coaching, a very important part that a lot of coaches don't even want to look at. I know I'm, t- I'm talking from experience. That is true. So Jeez, this is this is not a contrived situation. This is this is real. I'm for, I'm fortunate, but I bet you some people are not so fortunate. Uh, and there's all different facets to this. And let's get into this part. Do coaches need an LLC? Yeah. So I always like to say I get this question all the time. And the most popular questions I get is, should I have an LLC? And unfortunately, the answer is it depends. I can't really give a yes or no answer. But what it does depend on is really where your financials are at. So as you mentioned, especially if coaches are starting out, sometimes they're not making a lot of money. And, you know, I live in California, for example, and the tax for an LLC in California is $800. Okay. And that's regardless of I could make $0 that year, but if I have the LLC, I still have to pay $800. So I think, you know, one thing that's really important is to look at your financials and see, like, does it make sense for me? Am I making enough money that it's going to make sense for me to put the money into, you know, paying for the LLC, having the operating agreement, and then paying the taxes on it? Uh, And that's why I always tell coaches uh, to, you know, talk to their accountants, go over their financials, because everybody's financials are so different um, that that's going to be really important. You know, the benefit of having having an LLC is that you're protecting your liability. So if you're just operating as a sole proprietor, that means that your personal assets are on the line. So, you know, let's say you have $100,000 in the bank personally, but your business has only made $5,000. Well, if you get in trouble, uh, you know, that $100,000 could be on the line. Whereas if you have an LLC, now your personal assets are protected and it's only that $5,000 that's on the line, which is great, right? Because we want to protect our personal assets. There's obviously some exceptions to that, but that's generally how it works. So I tell coaches, you know, if you don't think you're making a lot of money for an LLC to make sense, definitely get insurance because that's a pretty cheap option. I think you can get insurance for like $50 a month, something like that. And of course, get good contracts because those are really going to protect you. So you can put off getting an LLC, it's 800 California, same thing here in New York. It's like even it's comparable, Uh, but don't, don't skimp on the insurance, which insurance, which you may get just, you know, $50 a month. Obviously it was like $600 for a year, but you pay monthly. So it's a, it's, 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 it's very more, affordable. yeah. But yeah, saying, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think that, um, 
I considered it, but then I said, no, I don't need insurance. But again, I, I don't think it was a very smart move. And I was, I was an active life coach for some years, about three, four years before I went on. Uh, yeah. But, and, but I, you know, I was liable. So, <laughs> right. I mean, also you have to think like some of it really depends on the coaching you do. And some coaches are much more at risk than others. There are some coaches who let's say are helping people with eating disorders or gut health or things that are very technical that um, can like really uh, teeter the line between giving medical advice. And, and so it's very risky. And those are really the areas where, you know, coaches want to make sure that they're protected. And so insurance, I think would be really important for something like that, as well as having good contracts. What I did, if someone had a diagnosed uh, this disorder uh, from the DSM, from the DSM, that you know, in, in the field of psychology, I wouldn't take them. Always not not work on that issue. Mm -hmm. And this was this was a pretty sage advice that was given to me because, you know, well, one, you know, the psychology field is very regulated. Uh, that's why therapists are certified and regulated by the state. And coaching is not therapy. You know, they 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 may have some overlap, but they are they are distinct. A lot of a lot of therapists, of course, become coaches, mm -hmm. uh, so they work on both sides, which is awesome. Uh, but I avoided that, which is prudent. But sometimes uh, that you know that if someone doesn't avoid it, they they better know what they're doing. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if if something goes awry, especially related to that issue like a eating disorder, which you just mentioned, or any mm -hmm. other, you know, there could be a lot of trouble. Yeah. And I actually, in my, um, one of the bundles that I provide in my contracts, I actually include consent forms because sometimes clients do want to share information with you as a coach. Like, you know, they might want to share their blood work with you if you're helping them with, you know, weight loss or reducing sugar or something like that. And so, I want to put something in place where they're very clearly outlining what it is that they're consenting to share with you, who they're, who's going to be sharing it with you and making sure they understand what that means, right? They have to understand that means you might be speaking to their physician, you know, is that okay with them? And it's also to protect the coach so that the client has signed, yes, I'm okay with this so that they can't come back later and say, Hey, I didn't know that you were going to be, you know, talking to this person or doing this. So, you know, it's just another element of protection. Now you graduated from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. How, how was that like, that, that school, that institute? Oh, it's a great school. Um, and if anybody's interested, you know, they can reach out to me. I'm happy to talk about it more with them. And I actually have, um, I'm able to like get other people discounts because I went there. So of course, please get in touch with me. But it was a really great school. It really taught, you know, a very holistic understanding of health and that it's not just about what you're eating and exercising. It's also about, you know, finding joy and loving your career and having family and friends and kind of really seeing that holistic picture. Um, and, you know, even though I'm not health coaching now, I did health coach for a little bit. Um, it's really informed my ability to help other health coaches because I've actually done it myself. You know, I know what it is like to coach and I know what some of the problems can be coming up. And I just, you know, I've been through it myself. You just answered my next question. So yes, that's exactly. So you, 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 from experience, you said, ah, man, I could really bring a great, a great, uh, benefit and service, uh, in terms of this kind of protection which I think really is, well, obviously it's very prudent, but, you know, I, I, I think that I want what I would hope for, for anyone that's considering becoming a coach or, or is a coach that they would get from our interview is that don't be like Tony, <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen to Jessica, check out at the end of course, so we'll talk about, you know, her, her, her presence on the internet, but, uh, you know, I, I, I was I was relying on hope and that's not a good strategy. It's definitely not a good business strategy. It really I was fortunate. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's that's that may not be the case for you. <laughs> if you get into coaching, uh, you may not be the great coach that I was. Uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> uh, and of course, I'm suggesting that. But this is this is a really valuable thing to to do because things things go bad. You know, and, and some people, you know, and coach, you know, when I, when I coached one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the vast majority of what I did for clients was help them achieve goals. Uh, and sometimes I helped them go from dysfunctional to functional. But again, I had to be careful about the very issues that we were talking about earlier about disorders and 
stuff out of the uh, uh, you know things uh, issues that were diagnosed. Uh, but if it wasn't, like I said, if it wasn't diagnosed, uh, I can help them become go from dysfunctional to functional. But th this is an area where you know the very, if not the issue, uh, a related issue can really become a quite a problem for a coach where you know a person is just simply unreasonable you know really you know and, and the therapists and coaches working with people that are unreasonable is par for the course but it can really blow up in your face <laughs> you're like what am i doing working with this kind of people <laughs> well this is the field you're in you've got you've got a deal mm -hmm. uh so you know and sometimes you can you know when working with people i when i when i worked with people and and got their outcomes and had you know victories it was the greatest thing in the world uh but sometimes uh I, we didn't get that great victory <laughs> and it was just mm -hmm. a little minor win okay was, the problem isn't so bad oh it's smaller okay that's great but now when you know if they if they don't if they don't they're not if they don't feel like a satisfied customer you know in, in coach in coaching we, we call our customers clients just like uh, lawyers, uh, and, and because we work one-on-one -on -one with people, so we call them clients. But if a client isn't happy, if you know, with with what they pay for, uh, just you know, it doesn't. You don't. They could even even in that case, you know, they could they could not just want a refund, uh, uh, which some 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 coaches give a refund and others do not. I think there's a mixed bag. What, what is, what's your uh, observation or experience about refunds? Yeah, well, what I always tell coaches to do and what I did myself was that if the, you know, well, well, a few things. One is I think often, and this is from personal experience coaching, clients come in and they have these really big goals and they're not able to see that they're just not in a place yet to get there, that they're not, you know, especially if let's say you have a three month program, they're not going to lose 50 pounds in three months, you know? And, uh, the first thing I think is to really sit down with them and in a gentle way, like create more realistic goals with them because automatically that's going to set, that's going to better set you up for success and your client for success and better set you up for your client to be happy. Right. So I remember I had a client once he like wasn't exercising at all. And he told me he wanted to be working out seven days a week in one month. And I had to gently, you know, I was like, you know, I'm pretty active and I don't work out seven days a week. You know, if you're not working out at all, maybe, you know, why don't we try like once a week, twice a week, maybe for the first month, you know? So doing things like that will really set you up and automatically reduces your risk because your client is expecting something that's more attainable. And then let's say, you know, even after all that, you have a difficult client, you're like, hey, I'm not happy. I always try to say, first, sit down with the client and talk to them. You know, if your client's like, I'm not happy, I want my money back, set up a call with them, talk to them, figure out what's going on. You know, maybe you can offer them an additional session, maybe, but like really do what you can to really see how you can make it work. You know, and in my agreements, I do provide very specific circumstances where a refund will be given back, but it's really only if, let's say, the coach is no longer, you know, gets sick, goes to the hospital, and isn't able to provide the service anymore, you know, or the patient, or the, sorry, the client gets sick and isn't able to, you know, be in the program anymore. But other than that, I really try not to give a refund just because of what you said. There's so much work that goes into the program before you even start seeing the Absolutely. client that it's really not fair to the coach to have to give back that money. Right. And in often cases, you know, well, sometimes I should say, uh, the client just doesn't do what you've asked them to do and help them exactly. to do. And they're like, well, did you do this? No. Well, well, how do you expect to get a good result if you didn't do, you know, I, I, uh, I remember I, I had a friend who was interested in me uh, from childhood. I knew him for years and he was interested in having me coach him. And I asked him one question just one, it was like a preliminary question, a sort of a screening question. Then a few weeks later, he contacted me. And I'm like, well, what, what's the answer to the question? Well, I didn't do it. I just want you to coach me. I'm like, listen, <laughs> I'm not going to coach you. Because if you can't do one frigging thing that right. I asked you to do, you're not going to do anything else. <laughs> so you, it's a very good thing to screen people too. You don't want, if I don't, you know, if you want to earth the bat, you don't want, you see this person could be a problem, a problematic person, or you're not going to be a good client. It's best to leave them that way. Yes, absolutely. And I always tell coaches, you know, doing a lot of coaches do like a discovery call. And it's important for them to remember that that call isn't just 
to try and get the client. It's also for you to decide if this is somebody you want to work with, you know, and I Absolutely. think it's important to go into it that way because you can't just, I, I think you have to really, um, I know it's hard at the beginning if you're not making that much money, you just want to take anybody. Right. Of course. But I think you really have to be careful about who you take and, you know, do you like get along with them? Are their needs something that you can actually help? You know, is that what your focus is? You know, if you're focused on weight loss and somebody is coming to you, um, I don't know, for something totally different, you know, maybe that's not the client for you because that's not really your area of expertise. And you have to be okay with saying, you know, I don't think I'm the right person for this. I can recommend so-and-so instead. Uh, And I guarantee when you do that, you will start to get the right clients when you're able to just say no and, you know, let them go to somebody else. You will start to get the clients who are right for you. I totally agree. Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll be right back with Jessica Weisenblut. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. When Ben Franklin arrived in Philadelphia, all he had was 10 cents in his pocket. Despite this, he became America's first self-made man. Visit www.perficio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O to actually have the knowledge and principles of Ben Franklin transferred into yourself. You're listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. We're speaking with Jessica Weisenbluth about coaching and the legal side of it and the very valuable service that she offers uh, let's get into experience. How does your experience as a health coach, now you said you've done this, but how does it inform your legal practice? Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, I have experience working as a healthcare attorney. Uh, and, you know, because I was also a health coach, there really is a gray area right now for health coaches because they aren't formally regulated by any type of law, but they are All sometimes- coaches. All yeah, coaches, there's, there's no regulation for any yeah. culture, which is awesome, but also there's another. There's yeah, I think it's it. great, but it's also difficult because I think sometimes what regulation does is it helps you know what your lines are, like what you can and can't do. Whereas mm. with coaches, because it's such a gray area and, and really where the laws do come in, where coaches who can get in trouble aren't really about coaches. They're just a little bit more general about, you know, you can't practice medicine without a license, that type of thing, right? Like if you are a coach and you're telling your client, you should be taking this supplement and you should be taking this and you should be taking that. And, or if you're advertising on your Instagram, I'll heal your gut, you know, for you. That's getting into bad territory. You, you know, know, Jessica, could... uh, one, one approach I had to give up on was uh, the death therapy approach. Uh, which I'm I'm just joking. <laughs> if you ever saw the movie What About Bob? Uh, he's Bob, uh, Bob no. Bill Murray's character, oh. goes to see the psychiatrist, uh, and uh, and the psychiatrist turns out becomes he he, he starts hating Bob because he's totally destroying his life. So he tries to kill Bob, and so Bob, <laughs> so he's so he's killing, trying to kill him in various ways. He goes, "Well, what kind of therapy is this?" He goes, "This is death therapy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, you know, you've got to. Uh, of course, I just in- inserted a little levity. But uh, yes, you have to, you know, know what you're doing. And you get the experience, you get that from experience. And you, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. I, I'm, I'm desperate for, for, for laughs, Jessica. I'm desperate for laughs. <laughs> I wish uh, this was a topic that was funnier, but it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm trying to put a lighter side to that, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, uh, but anyway, my, so my experience as a health coach, as I mentioned, because I've done it myself, uh, I'm able to combine my experience as a lawyer and my experience with healthcare and, you know, things like, let's say HIPAA, which regulates, you know, what you do with patients, medical information and apply it to health coaches in a way that's not obviously health coaches don't have to meet that really strict standard, but gives them some of the elements of that so that they can almost have those rules for themselves. So they know, okay, this is how I'm going to protect your information. This is what I'll do with it. This is how I'll share it, share it to the client. So the client signs off on it and says, now you're protected. And now the client knows exactly what you're doing with their information. So it's really just combining my experience as a health coach and as a lawyer and in the healthcare world to create really, you know, great contracts for people. Now health, the health and fit fitness segments of coaching is growing along with the rest of the field, but perhaps even in greater strides. Uh, 
And there's a number of reasons that are quote unquote good and, and, and bad for that. I think that the, the basic health of our society is, is not on the upturn, it's on the downturn. Obesity, all these mm -hmm. sicknesses, over medication of society, mm -hmm. we're a completely over medicated society. Uh, so, I mean, so you, you know, you're not practicing as a health coach anymore? No, I'm not. I do sometimes do, you know, corporate wellness talks. Like I'll do a talk to a group oh. of people, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one coaching Very anymore. Cool. Did you use uh, NLP, neuro-linguistic programming at all in your coaching? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Very cool. So I, 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 as I mentioned earlier, it was one of the greatest moments. It was so elating for me when I got, you know, when I, when I, I was certified in NLP. I was practicing, you know, I, I was into it for many years. Then I finally got certified and the stuff can be really like, you know, like, uh, unbelievable, you know, some of the claims, but, and sometimes, you know, when I would use some techniques as part of a strategy and it would work, I, I, I would be amazed. <laughs> like, I'm like, this shit really works. <laughs> you know, and the client, and the client would be something like I oftentimes I got two outcomes with clients or, or reactions. One, they, they would be similarly amazed. You know, they're like, I can't believe that doesn't bother me anymore. That I'm, you know, I'm past that. Or other times I would say, well, how's that problem now? And they would say, what problem? <laughs> I'm like, the problem that you were just crying your eyes out about 20 minutes ago. I said, oh, that doesn't bother me anymore. I said, okay, I'm glad to hear that. Check that off. Uh, but it's such a, it's such a rewarding field. And, you know, yeah. and even considering getting into the field, if you're in it, you already know. Um, I, I recommend it because helping people, uh, especially in a professional context where you're, you know, you get not just the, the reward of the act, like I just described, but you get a monetary reward. It can even make a living. It's one of the greatest things in the world. And that's a prime, you know, I, I created a virtual coaching program. Uh, and that's that I, I wanted to take away from all these per personal coaches, uh, like you were, like, like I was these one-on-one -on -one coaches, because it doesn't do that. I, I created this revolutionary app that's going to make self-help finally work. Now, are you familiar with personal development? Uh, certainly you, you can, you're familiar with personal development, but self-help. Yes. I love self-help, but if it doesn't work for the most part, if it worked, I would have been a millionaire a long time ago, a long time ago, <laughs> Jessica. So uh, people need a little, you know, need a little extra help. Uh, and that's what, and I created an automated coach that's right on your app that's totally customized is going to make a person get everything they wanted from a self-help course. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to change the world. And it's part of the success revolution I'm going to bring on. The point I'm making is that it's a little extra help for a person. Uh, mm -hmm. Coaches they're there. They give a, they, they give a, a loop, uh, you know, for a, a person that they're, they're there as an expert, sometimes an accountability partner, but they're there. They are a, a person that can guide a person through towards their goals and outcomes here you have jessica doing the same sort of thing for coaches mm -hmm. all right a coach needs a little extra help too <laughs> all right because as we just talked about the the legal area the legal liabilities and implications uh, are you know could be anything and so taking care of it even if it's just some of the minimal things you described like getting insurance or an llc uh is a really a I would say it's it's more than prudent. It's really a, it's it's something that you really got to do. You may, maybe you can get maybe you can you get started and not have and, and not have those things. But as you get going, you're gonna have to address that very soon because the sooner you don't, the the more the more you're open for liability. And going to a person like Jessica, you really you'll be addressing that need. Uh, so this has been a very beneficial conversation I will interview very valuable to coaches and people who are considering becoming a coach how does a person get in contact with you yeah so my website's really easy it's just the integrative lawyer.com and you can find me on instagram at, at the integrative lawyer and and uh so if you sign up for my mailing list on my website you get a free legal guide that gives you the basics for legal for starting your business as a coach and uh, i'm also going to offer a discount for everybody listening here on any of my coaching bundles so i have three different contract bundles one is a program agreement one is a program agreement with a release of liability and one is what i call the ultimate health coach bundle and it has both the program
the release of liability, a privacy policy, and two different consent forms. So, and it's really the best value. Uh, and so I'm gonna offer 10% off any one of those contracts with um, the code WELCOME10. So that's Thank for you. anybody listening. Thank you very much, Jessica. Repeat what those offers are again, please. Sure, so there's the uh, program agreement. There's, uh, that's one offer, that's sort of the basic one. Then there's a program agreement with a release of liability. So you're getting, you know, really that extra protection with the release of liability. And then the last bundle that I offer is called the ultimate health coach bundle. Uh, and that's the program agreement, the release of liability, a privacy policy, and then two different consent forms, one for sharing medical information and one for sharing personal information. Great. And that's at the integrative lawyer.com. The yes. integrative lawyer.com. And what's the uh, discount code? It's welcome 10. And I also want to mention that, um, you know, if you're interested in hearing more details about my contracts, I offer, I offer 15 minute free uh, calls to talk about them and to talk about, you know, what contracts would be best for your business. Great. That's fantastic. This has been a very informative, illuminating discussion. I really appreciate you being on. Uh, do you want to have any final remarks for the audience? Uh, just thank you for having me and, and listening. And I hope, you know, I wish everybody the best of luck in, in their coaching and, you know, get excited about it. I know this stuff doesn't sound exciting, but it is a really exciting thing to be doing. And as you said, it's so rewarding. It's great. Thanks for all that valuable information and those great uh, offers. I, I recommend that anyone interested in coach in becoming a coach, going to Jessica's website and seeing what she's about, you know, at least signing up for her mailing list. And uh, I, I want everyone to remember, we're all responsible for ourselves and we can all use a little help and help from people like Jessica. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Thank Jessica. you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. Remember to visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Self-Help Coaching Podcast.